Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use Scratch to create a virtual dice roller. The dice roller is going to require us to use the random function and a little bit of maths to come up with a probability based system that will um, automatically generate a number that you could use in some kind of a game. So let's check out how to do it. Mr. Jack, that's me. Teach you stuff. Okay. Hey everybody. So as you can see, I've got Scratch opened and I am logged in. So you'll have to do that yourself. Um, let's hit create and start ourselves a new project. All right, so here we go. We've got a blank uh, canvas. Um, what I'm gonna start off with is just get rid of the cat. We don't need him today, sorry buddy. And we're going to create a new sprite. So basically all we really need for this is going to be our uh, dice. We're gonna make it actually look like a dice. It doesn't really need to, you could just do any kind of numbers, but um, in this particular case, I want to make it look like a dice. So go down to choose a sprite and we're going to paint our own. Here's where we can paint what we want our dice to look like. So obviously I'm going to need a rectangle. Pro tip, if you want to have a perfect square while you're drawing the shape, Hold down the shift button on your keyboard and that will lock it to be a perfect square. And in actual fact, that happens in most apps generally. Let's move it into the center. There we go. I don't really want it to be purple though, so I'm going to select it and change the fill. Just have a white background. And I don't, I, I like the outline actually. I'm gonna leave the outline on. And we are going to also need a dot. So here, same thing goes if you want a perfect circle, hold down the shift button so you don't kind of draw an oval by accident. I think that's going to do me and I'm going to put that dot right in the center. So there we go. So that's our dice and that is the side that represents one, obviously. So let's go up here and name the costume as dice one. Also over here, this is the name of the sprite. I'm gonna call this dice. Now you'll see the difference between the sprite and the costumes in a moment, but basically a sprite can have multiple costumes. So if you think of this as kind of like a character, it can have different appearances depending on which one you want. That's exactly what we're going to do for this tutorial. So I've already got dice one, so let me click on this and duplicate to make dice two. And in Dice two, obviously we want to have two of these circles. Another pro tip for you, if you want to make a quick copy of something, um, again, this works in most apps uh, that are drawing based. If you press hold down the alt button while you drag the dot, it'll make you that second um, copy. You don't have to do control C, control V. Okay, so there's two. Let's make another copy. Okay, I skipped ahead a little bit there, but now you can see I've got dice one, dice two, dice three, dice four, dice five, dice six. These are all the different costumes, but there is only one um, actual sprite over here. So that's good. That's everything we need for right now. You don't have to do it in black and white. You can do it, decorate it with colors. You could even draw the, the um, you know, type in the numbers, like uh, the actual uh, symbol for one rather than the dots, but I decided to make it uh, traditional. Let's go for the traditional style. All right, so here's our dice looking nice and big. And first thing I want to do is let's get it to just cycle through these things as if it's rolling. Okay, so I want to add a bit of code to this sprite to make it just change from one to two to three to four to five to six. Let's get that happening to start with. So we'll start with a when flag clicked. So whenever we click that flag, it'll do whatever comes next. Go to the looks and we're going to say next costume. Okay, so it says next costume. That means it'll just change through the costumes that it has. And we want to repeat this. So I could put in, for example, a forever loop or a repeat a certain amount of times loop, which I think I'm going to use this actually and we'll, we'll see why this is helpful later. Now, only problem with this is if I just put it like that, It'll happen so fast that we can barely even see what's going on. So I'm going to put in a, a little wait. 
So I go to, actually it's in control, where it is, wait, wait one second, here it is. Uh, but I don't wanna wait one second, that's too long. Let's put in 0.1. So what I'm expecting to happen here is when I click, it will change costume, wait for a, a 0.1 of a second, then change costume again, and I'll do that 10 times. So let's see if it works. It did. In fact, it's probably a little bit too fast. Maybe I could slow that down slightly. Let's go 0.2. Okay, it's kind of rolling. Cool, and then it stops on something, okay? However, it's a little pre predictable right now because it repeats it exactly 10 times. So we don't want it to always be the same because um, then you would be able to pick up a pattern. It's gonna change costume 10 times. So it'll go from three, the next one's going to be one, the next one will be five, three, and gonna be back to one. So it's actually gonna be a pattern now because it, it does it only 10 times. So we don't want that. We actually want this to be random, okay? So we're gonna use some maths here to put in a random function. So to do that, we're gonna go into the operators where you'll find all of your uh, different uh, maths functions. And we can choose this one, pick random from one to 10. Now pop that in there. Now the obvious thing to do would be to set it to be a random number from one to six. So when it rolls, it'll either move forward one costume or it'll move forward by six costumes or five or four or three or two, any of the numbers in between. Um, so that would work out quite well. However, I think that will be a little bit confusing to people who are using it because if I just click on, um, uh, on the flag and it changes one time, it's a little confusing like has it rolled or has it not? So I actually think what we can do is make it roll between six and 12 times, okay? So that means it'll at least go through the entire, um, all the numbers and then it will stop on something in the next round, okay? So it should still be just as likely to land on um, any of them, uh, but it will actually, no, that should be a seven. I should start at seven, because six would bring me back to it. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So seven to 12. So that means uh, there's still six possibilities, because there'd be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's six possibilities. So let's try that. Okay, it stopped on five. Let's try it again. Four this time. Let's try it again. It stopped on three. It seems to be counting down, but it should be random. Three again. Six this time. Okay, so it's gonna give me random numbers now. Great, so that's a really good start. So now we've got a dice that is giving us some random numbers. And that could be used for some kind of a game or it could be anything. But let's jazz it up a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more exciting than this. So what I'm thinking is while it's rolling, I would like some kind of a sound to kind of indicate that it's being rolled. Something like a some kind of beeping or something like that. And then maybe once it's finished rolling, it'll be like do do do, some kind of tone that tells you it's done. Okay, so we need two different sounds here. Um, one of the sounds is going to go into uh, start sound into this part. So you'll hear the sound every time that uh, it changes costume. In fact, we could probably put it just after it changes costume. And then um, uh, some other sound will play at the end. So let's see what we've got. Let's click on the sounds tab and we can choose a new sound. And there's a whole bunch of different sounds in here. Um, that might be helpful for us. All right, this one sounds really good for my finish sound. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in and call it uh, finish. This is a nice tone to indicate that the dice is done rolling. Okay, so every, that, I think that's pretty well understood. Uh, let's find another one. I need a really short sound that can kind of be like, like a click for each time that it's it, it rolls or whatever. Okay, 
I think this might actually work. Um, it's a bit of a funny sound, but it, it kind of sounds cool when you do it really quickly. So that might actually work. Let's, let's just chuck it in and see how it goes. Um, so this can be my rolling sound. Cool, all right, let's go back into the code and use these sounds now. So every time that it uh, changes face, it's going to start the rolling sound. Now, the useful thing about this is once it goes back around, it'll restart it. Hopefully that works. And then when it's done at the end of after the repeats, I want it to play the sound finished. Let's see what happens. Okay, that kind of worked actually. Uh, it would be nice if this was a little bit faster, this one here, but um, uh, I'm gonna leave it how it is for now because it's, it's quite simple and it works. So every time we click play, it'll roll us a new number. Not bad. Okay, so there we go. We've got a dice roller. Um, it seemed to work out and it wasn't too difficult. So good luck everybody and uh, I'd like to see what you come up with. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed making your dice roller in scratch um, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye!